proud sponsors of UCMMA. Welcome to a podcast edition of Cage Side. Grant's flown in or drove in on his little motorbike with all the. I tech. loaded, Dave. I was riding you rode past. In. You're, you're like Tonto. It's like the Lone Ranger and Tonto all over again. On his protective gear, because remember, health and safety is paramount to us. Safety is. Look at them shoulders. In fact, maybe the cage fire. It's, it's time. Fight, it's, it's, go time in. it's time boxing jacket. <laughs> go yeah. in and get all protected up. Only B class, I wasn't that good. But this podcast is all about. It's all about Saturday night. You said May 34. I mean, it was an absolute nightmare for me. Most guys, we talked about it before, they would have cancelled the show two weeks ago. They went, so many pull out, so many tickets back. Let's cancel the show. But you know what? We don't do that. Well, it's, yeah, some guys, the less established people, you know, the, the real grassroots guys. If you go back in the day, yeah, people used to cancel the show. They still do. There was a guy. Don't, don't even mention the there, There's a certain person who, he, uh, he did a show. It was a local show. He didn't pay anyone. Walked away from the show. But apparently the show was a shambles. And he's putting another show on in the same venue. And they're allowing it to go ahead. Check one, two, check one, two. Things like that. When fighters don't get paid, when staff don't get paid, it's disgusting. It shouldn't happen. Dave, UCMA is so established. I mean, there's no way on earth. The bank cat's so big. Yeah, but there's no way you can I'm think still paying on Saturday now, Mum. So, but, but let's but, not talk let's about, not talk the about negative. Money. Let's Let, talk about, let's be positive, hang on. Yeah. Talk about positive energy, getting that baldness through the grassroots. <laughs> it was all, and you know what, at about three o'clock, they said, Why well, you look so miserable? I said, If you had my problems, you would. And I thought, You know what, let's have a drink. Let's just let's just make the night what it is. And it, well, it turned out it weren't as if, bad. If it was easy, everyone, everyone would, would do, do it. it. Everyone would do it. But what a night. Just like fights. fights. Yeah. What a night of fights. The fight card, uh, you know, we've said it time and time again, the fight card's always stacked if you know the fighters. There weren't particularly uh, huge names on the card, but some talent that is coming through. Unbelievable. The guys, who, the fights were fantastic. The guys, they had so much energy, so enthusiastic, the shape they're coming in. If you get the, so the many footage, people said that. So yeah, many people said that. The shape athletes, of the fighters really is athletes. changing. These guys are really looking to go somewhere. And um, well, yeah. we had a nightmare. Let's talk about a nightmare. First of all, the Neil Grove fight and John Gillies fight. Imagine if you played all the money just to see that one fight. It's all hyped up for one fight, and it all goes peak time. They both clash shoes. Yeah. They both get massive. I mean, you said you could see the, uh, the guy's bone. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I've I've refereed fights before where um, guys have actually snapped their shins. Um, I've refereed a lot of fights, uh, usually kickboxing where you'll have a shin to shin clash but when they actually get bone on bone and the shin splits oh. it isn't rare it's nasty. it creates a hole that goes right down to the shin bone um, there's you know there are um, huge blood vessels arteries down there um, another clash and, and that you're going to have well, a well both guys wanted to carry on but they both said they wanted to carry the on fighters but the always said no but the referee's got to make a decision. A, it's safety. You know, there's blood everywhere. But you've got one important thing as well as well as safety at that moment is the longevity of the fighter's career. Yeah. If they get a huge gash down there that's going to affect them every time they fight, then it's just ridiculous to allow the fight. It's going absolutely going. So looking forward to that fight. Yeah, both guys. Main event. Put it this way: both guys were in the after party. Then both guys said, "You know what? We want to go out partying." They went out partying together in the West End. Both saying. Let's do a rematch. We'll have it yeah. large, but they went out. Part. That's the sort of fighters you're getting. I mean, well, proper gentlemen, mate. Yeah, it's been great. Let, let's get some footage of them the next morning when they, ah, they, oh, they step out of bed and they oh, come. Oh, they was in bits, yeah. weren't they? But they but in Neil, bits. Neil Groves, he actually had people fly over from South oh, Africa no, to can't. see that fight, and it lasted about 40 oh. seconds or something. It is what it is. But on, let's go back to the weigh-ins. At the weigh-ins, we had three fights pulled. One guy couldn't do safe MMA, which left Damon Lake. Unbelievable, we're out of fight. It's gutting. A safer mate is great for safety, but we can't pull in last minute sometimes. You know, we just can't do it. He couldn't get to the doctors, couldn't get the blood. this level. So we, 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 had to, we had to pull the fight. But Damon Lake, let me just tell you about how nice we are. Paid him for. He's coming out to collect his purse today. Yeah. That's what we like, you know. It, just because the fight gets pulled, the fighter should still get paid. But I'm gutted for his fans and gutted for all his hard training. So you yeah, had that fight pull off. You had the girl, Grace Spice and Grace Anderson. They, Didn't make luckily, they agreed to fight without me. They said, look, they put this fight on. I did. They agreed to wait. 
one of them couldn't make, make Grace Anderson come in three kilos, which is out of order. Couldn't, but couldn't or wouldn't. Couldn't or wouldn't or shouldn't yeah. or whatever. But that fight didn't go ahead. Gutted yeah. for uh, Grace Spicer. But I mean, Grace Anderson looked in great shape. Fight at 70 kilos. Don't muck around. Yeah. Don't yeah. muck around, you know. Don't muck around your way. And then we had the Umi Kiani and the, <laughs> the uh, Cold Dick Deacon fiasco, which is. Look, we're both there, Graham. I think fiasco's right. I, I think we ought fiasco. to. Uh, we should put any rumours to bed. Um, Kuljit Degan and Umar Kiani, they there was a lot of, uh, you know, some people bad call blood. it a grudge match. They, got a grudge match. There was bad blood. They've been calling each other up, posting stuff on uh, social networks, whatever. Uh, the usual malarkey that no, goes that goes on surrounds a fight. Um, when they turned up, some bad things have been said. Uh, Umar Kiani, you know, Fighters can be emotional on the day, you know, their adrenaline's rushing through. Umar got a bit angry, stepped over to uh, Coljit. No, actually, let me just step in yeah. there as a negotiator. Okay, what happened right. was, Coljit called his mate over. Oh, right, yeah, he okay, stood up, yeah, Coljit yeah. called him back. He, he said, gestured. He gestured, gestured. like, this yeah. was the gesture. Come on, let's have it. Yeah, have it, lad. Yeah. So he called him over. As his mates walked over, it was a bit, Umar thought, oh, hang on here, Bob, step behind. Next minute, which I didn't see, but two people saw it, Cold, it went to head him like that, which I thought was, yeah, I know, I know. Okay. I, I didn't see that bit. But what I then saw was uh, Mr. Keani gave a little tippy tappy. Now, if I did that, Grant might call the police on me. But remember, we are fighters. To me, it's out of order. You know, I, I'm right. a man of my word. I mean, you settle things, you settle things, but you don't be calling the police to go and get another geezer nicked. It's wrong. Yeah. It ain't right. But so, I, I'm not happy with that. The police then advised me and you, Grant, we was out there just going, when that when they actually saw the footage, we showed the CC, what, what did they do? Was you there when they laughed or not? I, uh, I, no I'll comment. say it like it is. No, no comment. comment. The no Fifth right. Amendment for Grant, the policeman laughed. He went, you are kidding me. I said, it is what it is. Uma was arrested because of it, but it was a slap. Yeah. Yes, he did go back, but it was a slap. It wasn't yeah, a punch. It, it, was, uh, it was a situation that was uh, blown out of proportion. Yeah. We've all seen weigh-ins. We've all, we all remember the Tyson... Uh, Sagas uh, at his way. We've had many a push Chisara, and shove at our place, uh, mate, haven't we? Lots of boxing stuff, lots of stuff's happening in the UFC, pushing, uh, loads of fight shows. Alex Reed and Barrett, he kissed him! They, a million yeah, yeah, when Alex Reed <laughs> <laughs> kissed him. <laughs> kissed Barrett. You know, things happen at weigh ins. <laughs> Two guys. It's show you're, business! You're going to get in a cage and, and try and beat each other up anyway. But the worst thing is after that, if he didn't even want to fight it, he'd got up and walked away. But no, there was going, there was going to still do the fight, there was still doing it, and then call the police. I just, look, to me it's out of all that. It's put to bed. Hang on. To bed. There you go. Night, night. That's, night. that's to bed. Yeah. Let's run through the card, guys, right, because, yeah. you know, Alfie Davis, Tom Richards, both young semi pro guys, there were some wicked kicks gone in. Uh, some people say it stopped a bit early, but Grant, semi-pro. It's semi-pro, you know, the referee has to take into account the level of the fight. Precisely. If it's a, you know, it's, if it's a Vitor Belfort, whoever, yeah, fighting at the go. top level, these guys are conditioned, they can take more punishment. You've got to remember these guys are low level, they're young. Um, they might be hungry, but we've got to protect them uh, from each other as well as from themselves. I like that. Protect them from each other. Then Anthony Gooch, uh, another great win by Anthony Gooch, who beat Michael McVoy, again a late replacement, but Anthony Gooch, I think now the rumours are he's actually going to go and train at Lions Pride. He said, "You know what, Dave? I've dabbled. Now I, I, I want to get there. I've seen Jimmy. He's always by the he's always by the ringside. He's supporting his fighters. He does support his fighters. Yeah, yeah. I, I want I want to get there. I'm only, I'm only I think he's 10, 15 minutes away. He wants to go start training in there and make a stamp. And then let's go to Jay Dodds and Gary Cooley. Now Gary Cooley, I've seen a lot of footage of him. A really hard and fire, but Jay Dodds, I just where did that come from? Gary Cooley on the day he looked very very nervous, but Jay Dodds. If you saw him, he looked confident, but he, his adrenaline, he was shaking. And he said to me afterwards, it isn't until you fight on a UCMMA that you realise the pressure of the event. And we've said this time and time again, you can be a world champion in the gym. When you step out and fight on television in front of a few thousand people in the cage, with the lights, with the cameras, well, it's that's funny. when you Do you know what? Out. It was Tom Richards who was, who was in the cage early on when he was going... <clears throat> Should this be happening to me? I said, what? He went, there's people dancing in my belly. <laughs> yeah. He went, there's people yeah. dancing in my belly. And he yeah. went, I can't stop shaking. And I went, yeah. listen, you're not the first. And, I was and you won't be the last. <laughs> I was talking to a fighter at the uh, press conference, who uh, a well-known fighter. who we Because I coach I coach a lot of fighters um, regarding mental preparation. And this word fear that some people 
try to reject. I, say, I don't get scared, I don't feel fear, but, I'm shaking. Uh, but I get adrenaline and I get excited. Well, you know, whatever you, know what they say? whatever you want to call it. You know what they say? It's learning how to channel that fear or generally yeah. into power. Once you can do that, you're a master of your own game. Mike Shipman, Aaron, Aaron Brett. Now, again, if you look at the weigh-ins, I would have bet my house on Mike Shipman. He was cut, he was ripped, he was shredded. No. Aaron Brett come in. La la la, yeah. looked like he'd been on whatever, you know, on the beer. And never he, judge a book by its cover. Never judge a book by its cover. But as I say, Mike said he, he, still, he felt a bit nervous going in there, da, da, da. But apparently now I've heard Aaron Brett. Oh, hang on, hang on. Oh, it is a podcast. Man, it's a podcast, isn't it? We're all podcast. Let's put him on speaker. <laughs> Hello, is that Lee? Is that, is that Lee Page? You want are you coming to collect uh, Damon Lake's money? Okay, well, I'm here. I'm here. I've got it all bagged up for you, mate. Don't we never let a fighter down. Listen, you're live on a podcast. So what do you want to tell me? Are you accepting this fight in August or what? Hello? He's gone speechless. He's jumped off. This is what happens when they get see that that's not that's called nerves, it's adrenaline. The pressure, the of, pressure a of a podcast. Pressure of a podcast. That just adrenaline's right up. Look, well, don't worry, we speak to him like that's another great camp, the Combat Academy, always bringing good fighters down, always game on. So yeah, Aaron Brett says he's going down to 77 now, but yeah, actually got some hands around and his camp said, yeah, he's as mad as that. In fact, it was Lee who told me, he's as mad as a fruitcake. It's right? interesting, on, on each of the shows, it's, uh, there's a broad spectrum of levels of fighters. You know, we've got the we've got the TV card, uh, the upper card, and we've got the preliminary fights, and they are lower levels, and they're still finding out, like we say about the pressure of the event, and a very important what weight to fight at. Yeah. We see guys coming in, you know, a little bit chubby, a bit like you do, you know, carry an excess poundage, a bit of extra fluid. They go to the gym, uh, or they fight, and they find out that they could be fighting at one or two weight categories below, yeah. below well, what you they see it time and time again. Right, million. <laughs> right, next up, John Williams versus Paul Kingdom. Now, Paul Kingdom, remember, just raised money for cancer, running a marathon, like a few weeks before, right? unbelievable. But John Williams, I called him Geordie Shaw because he's yeah, brown, yeah, yeah, yeah. ripped. Yeah, yeah. John Geordie Shaw Williams, I don't yeah. know if he's that bad, because his name's Joe Gone. Yeah. Uh, Joe Yeah, but everyone. Joe knew. Connie, Joe, go! The whole, Joe Connie, uh, Joe Gone. The, the, the whole crowd knew what he was on about. That, that like. was brilliant though when he came in when it's an app mute. I mean. But you mentioned that, you mentioned running a marathon. You know the medics, uh, the medics who do combat show, uh, combat sports shows, they do boxing, uh, they cover boxing, they cover MMA, and they'd say it time and time again when they check the heart rates and the condition of uh, fighters who are fighting MMA at the higher levels, they are uh, never it's never seems to amaze them how fit the low heart rates and that um, that the MMA fighters have. The fitness of these guys, three five minute rounds. If you've ever sparred one minute boxing, just try and do thirty seconds. Of well, I'll tell, you, I'll, I'll tell you what, it, 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 here's a little test for you. We've got a PE instructor. Obviously, everybody knows now, we're on ITV, we're doing a trick for Dom Jolly. And we had this PT instructor from the school, fit, ripped, cut. We was down Team Titan for his first little uh, roll around with Ben, like 30 seconds in, he's like, oh, stop, stop. He, didn't, he was sick, wasn't he? Yeah, he, later on he was yeah. sick as yeah. well. And he didn't realise how he went, I respect th these guys now yeah. on such a level. Just doing a little bit of training, he weren't even doing And then a bit of light sparring in the afternoon, if you was there, with Ben Smith and him, and he went, I can't go on. Yeah. He went, otherwise tonight, I'll just be, I'll be, I'll be ruined. Yeah. And he is now a different respect for fighters. And that was brilliant. I mean, ITV, August 24th, it looks like it's going out. That is, I mean, seven million people watching the show, you know, that's going to be, and they've asked for footage because they couldn't believe it, how great the show was. That's yeah, the, what you want. What was the, um the other fight with the, the, uh, the I, I, I don't, don't, don't worry, we're going we're to go right through. <laughs> then we went on a Mo, Mo Laz and Tony Hall. Now, I've got new respect for Mo. Mo's come in, do you remember on the white car, uh, the WCMA, he was all flat. He's now turned into a man, he's respectful, yeah. new fighter, and he was caught in a triangle, and I thought, that's it, yeah. Mo's gone. But yeah. he manned up, got out of it, and won the three round decision, which was about Tony Hall. Young prospect there, I'm going to keep my eye on him because that is yeah, going to be a good little fight. No, yeah. it's going to be a good little fight. Obviously then, which, there was a lot of um and ah at Ben McGonagall and Chase Morton, who won. Wow. But it's every, every eye is different. You, you look at a great, I won't say, a, a medium-sized woman and you call her not very slim. And then another person goes, no, I like that heavy kind set. of... I like that heavy-set woman. And another one... So it's what the eye sees. <laughs> 
Yeah. Do you remember well, the whole film? Do you know what? It's what the judges see. They see some things completely different. Okay, I, I say it time and time again. Don't leave it to the judges. Yeah. Then you can't moan about the decision. He fin- did try and finish it. I mean, Ben was trying yeah, to finish it. It's easier said than done. Finish yeah. the fight before the end of the three rounds. But there's three judges. They're three different sides of the cage. Three different opinions. And um, they all got it the same. So they all did have it the same. Yeah. Um, I thought it was a very close fight. Very close fight. Um, it's a shame you can't have an extra round in MMA just, cool. just to make well, sure. We, we just change it around. Me and you, know, you can't. Who cares? I think Chase Morton was very surprised. Ben McGonagall's an independent fighter. He still isn't affiliated ah, to uh, a fan, one of these big gyms, London Shoot Fighters. Or anything. If he went and trained and got uh, got taken in by London Shoot Fighters, Team Titan, or one of the bigger gyms, he is a He's a, a Terminator. You know what yeah. it is? You can't, you can't, very tough. You can't learn that. Very fit. To keep going for it. He, he was Mark, when you actually see him, he was marked up a lot and Chase never marked on him, so it just shows you. But Chase Morton, that is a new prospect. Keep your eye on that kid because yeah. he's going all the way. Uh, definitely. And then we had. I mean, this was what a fight. Marion Husson, be actually before that. Marion Husson versus uh, the John, big boy. John Demel. No, not John Demel. No, John Demel didn't fight. John Demel got injured. Uh, it was Cooney, Brett Cooney. Oh, I uh, mean, yeah. Brett Cooney stepped in at the last minute. But did he well, perform? What a fight. And everybody, it wasn't the best fight in the world, but the, one of the most entertaining well, fights for a long time. I think a lot of skilled people would have been just amazed and used the word ridiculous but it was actually anyone who wasn't smiling during that fight <laughs> uh, who didn't get entertained by it, uh, you know uh, I mean it was hilarious yeah it was um, absolutely hilarious but what you just fight. didn't know what was going to happen no next, you didn't did you? know what was, anyone could have got knocked out any time <laughs> and then again a guy who just ceases to amaze me Nathan Jones Took on, again, Julian Kerr, and he's fighting now on UCMA 35. Tickets go on sale, by the way, this Friday. Don't you dare miss it. But Julian said, Dave, look, I just want someone who's going to stand back. And he done a spinning kick over Nathan's head. Did you yeah. see that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hook kicked his head and just missed him. But he took it on a moment's notice. He went, Dave, all I want to do is a door. Once I, got, I said, once you do a, sh- a short notice fight for me, I'll book you again. Yeah. Then you've got time to train. But Nathan, but, he's another one. Chase Morton, yeah. Nathan Jones. They, bag and tag. Bag and tag. They know that the... There's something else. It's not just being a fighter. You've got a personality. And they've got it. Flair. You've got to take risks. And you've got to do stuff that the crowd want to see next time. And Um, he always does it. Nathan Jones always comes in. They promise me a Batman suit next time. Let's hope so. You never know. You never know. And Bobby Razor has got his eye on both of them kids, you know, because if the rumours of Bellator are coming over here, let's not squash rumours, etc, etc. But, you know, they're going to make a big stamp next year. And they'll be looking for young talent like that. Then Ricky Campbell and Makunga. Makunga does it again. I mean, that boy, he looks yeah. like he looks like uh, he's ready to go to Tarzan all over again, isn't he? Ricky Campbell wasn't phased at all. No. Um, in the press conference the day before, no, whatever. Uh, he had his fist on yeah, his yeah, he did. face, which I thought was, uh, uh, you know, a bit yeah. on the edge. Um, Makunga, I think he needs to work on his cardio maybe a little bit. He's very muscular, so he's getting lactic acid build up um, towards the later rounds of the fights, you know. And he does feel the effect of, of those uh, that very muscular. He never gets what? But he's strong. He's going down to seventy. There you go. Right, he's dropping down to seventy. I don't, guys, I don't know where they're going to put it all. But he's going down to seventy. He's going to rock the weight division. Right, he'll, sure. he will rock the weight division if he gets the weight cut right. He, yeah. He walks around at 80, 87, 88 kilos. It's ten kilos. Um, it's ten kilos. It's not undoable. Um, a lot of fighters are cutting that much weight now, but it's, it's not cutting the weight, it's putting the weight back on and having the energy and the cardio okay for the fight the next I day. I like this podcast. I had a little chat with me, me and Grant now, a little liberal. We do this all the time. <laughs> Come around in the jacuzzi, a little cut of beers in the jacuzzi, we talk about, yes Grant, what should we talk about today? Alcohol, Dave. Never. Never. Yeah, water we drink. Then uh, and Lucas Klinger takes on Mike Noon. I mean, no one saw that coming. I mean, Mike's a big prospect, but Lucas Klinger, that is a new guy to watch. He's shredded, he's ripped. He's Linton Vassal's training partner, which you right. say uh, quite a lot, shouldn't you? I don't know why his surname makes me smile. Klinger. Klinger. But, um, it's a bit Star Trek in there. Yeah, there's got to be a great it's fight. Be. Out there. <laughs> got, and I don't know, but that's what they need to do. They need to. Uh, was it capitalise on their names? Capitalise on yeah, what they yeah, do, like jo- yeah. Johnny Williams, go Johnny, go. You know, yeah. it's silly things, but it makes you remember. At the moment, he's not getting remembered, but trust me, he gets something that remember the crowd. I think he's four, five, and zero now. He's right. going to go all the way. Do you know what I mean? He's, but Mike News back already. You said made thirty-five. He's taking on Jay Oliver. Both of these guys now have been beat by Lucas Klinger, which is great. You can both chance. One of you guys are going to win. Yeah. 
That's, so, ma that's called matchmaking. Though. It's called matchmaking. That's what yeah. I try and do. Hang on, we've got a little text here. Text. Hang on. Wrong password. Wrong password. He said, by God, Dave, every time, every time I Ooh, see you, ev every time I see you on the camera, you just make me think of young you men. Younger and, and younger. Beautiful and how gorgeous you are. Your wife's so lucky. So is Grant having you as a training partner and a co-promoter. Anyway, let's move on from that. Hang on, we've got it. This is the first gonna be it. Curtis Widmere takes on Ty Palmer, UCMA 35. It now. Curtis Widmere on 33. Do you remember he went toe-to-toe -to -toe with Joe Cooper? What's uh four what was his record? Four and two. So and Curtis Widmere. No, Curtis had first professional fight was on uh, UCMA 33. Jim, out of Jimmy's camp. Remember, he went toe to toe with uh, Joe Cooper. The other thing you don't remember, luckily Grant only refs three rounds or five rounds at a time because after that, he does forget things. When he walks past you, he just forgets. He just, it's Alzheimer's. It happens to us all. Let's do 63, what do you expect? Right, let's go. And then, the Galorba fan, though, Peter Irving, what a co main event. I mean, yeah, well, that, both guys are just phenomenal. When you look at that fight card, you start looking at reading it and you start everyone, going, oh my days. You know, everyone's excited, everyone wants to see what's going to happen with the heavyweights. But as far as entertainment goes and fireworks, everybody knew that Peter Irving, Global Fando, was going to be the fight with just the craziest things happening. I think Galore, um, he did feel the effects of the work rate, but he held back a bit. He wasn't doing the jumping, spinning. He'd be round. very clever with his fight because he knows what Peter's like. You know, and, and as you say, give Peter another couple of rounds could have been a totally different. Even Peter said he got off a bit late. He got off a bit late. He off. is a terminator, mm. isn't he? He comes forward, he keeps coming, takes coming. everything the other guy's got to uh, throw at him. He's he's very much like um, a lot, some of the Eastern Europeans. When I go to uh, Russia and, uh, and uh, Eastern Europe places, Czech Republic, Slovenia, and that, those guys coming out of there, they're very solid, uh, walk forward, very much like Peter Irving's uh, style, uh, very traditional. But when he lands, I mean. When he lands, he you know, lands. If somebody doesn't stop and they take everything you've got to throw at them, when you're fighting someone like that, you're just thinking, what have I got to do to stop this guy? Yeah, and you're. It's ben McGonagall, he's another Ben McGonagall, isn't he? You're working. Your gas is going. <laughs> you think if I don't stop him, you know he's going to get me. So, and, and another one that was uh, that was one where uh, some people, especially Peter Irving's corner, thought that the, the decision was uh, not quite right. But um, you know, it, it's what, very hard. We've all cornered fights. Well, if you go have and look at the fights. footage, yeah, go and look at the footage. Yeah. You've all cornered fights. The trouble is when you're sitting back, you're either looking one at your fighter or two at the opponent, but you're not looking at the fight. Because you're trying to look at the you, whole. You only see what your fight lands. Yeah, yeah, and, and you're and I, I heard it. Galore would go, ba, 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 and then you'd hear Peter over, Peter, hey! and yeah, I heard yeah. that in the corner. I went, yeah, yeah. they're shouting for one kick, where he just landed free. Yeah. So it is that. I mean, I I had the scorecard as, uh, and I'm no judge, <laughs> but I, I had as uh, Galore, Galore, Peter. There was one point there which I, I'll ask you now, quite or, or where he hit Peter Urban. Peter hit the ground, yes. and he jumped. He was quick to get back up, but shouldn't if you, if you knock someone down, shouldn't that have been a ten-eight round? No, it, it's no. The scoring system is no, no, no not the scoring system. He got knocked down. Okay. Shouldn't he been given an eight count? No, it's if somebody get if somebody gets hit with a damaging blow that affects their ability to defend themselves, then you he smiled when he got up. Then exactly. you give them an eight count. If they're hit on the back foot and they go over. It's not a blow that is that has affected um, their ability to fight and defend themselves. So it's it's you learn something every day. Well, you know you're going to email me, Dave at UCMA.com for your uh, derogatory comments about Grant. And he's I got knocked down, but I didn't really get knocked down, bollocks. But that, that's what happens on these things. He, he tells me something, I go away and believe it. Then you email me and say I'm rubbish. Listen, people, it's been absolutely amazing. Remember Twitter at Cage Rage or Twitter at UCMA. No, it's at UCMA. We will do another competition. So what I want to hear is, uh, I don't even know the competition, but it doesn't matter. I'll make one up anyway. It'll be, hang on, let me think. Ben Smith versus Nick Chapman, UCMA 35. What champion was Ben Smith? He's been two champions. Name the two champions, Twitter it. I'll pull them out of the app for next week and we'll send you a cut of tickets if you're really lucky. If they haven't been sold. Remember, tickets go on sale on Friday. That is Granite Grant Walkman. He's a man on a motorbike. Yes, he's in the nude underneath that kit. We'll see you next time on the UCMA Thanks. podcast. Don't interrupt me when I'm signing out. Right. Okay, don't start arguing now at the end. Okay.
Showtime! U C M M A. Are you really, really ready for the 